Hi, it's Dwyer. It's April 30th, 2021. Always1776.com, a free site. Wealthspinning.blogspot.com, a free site. Let me also add that if you're looking for these sites on a mobile device, let's say the Chrome browser, just go into your settings and look up the desktop version. It's much more detailed and advanced than the mobile version, right? The mobile version is designed for quick loading on a mobile phone. The desktop version provides many more links and much more information. Let's talk crypto, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me point out that Dash is up big in the last 48 hours. If you have been tracking my videos, uh, let's just say this last 48 hour period has been spectacular. I'm sure many of you are able to pay a lot of bills using Dash. Well, let's shift gears a little bit. Let me just point out that in crypto, the big ideas are out on the periphery. They just appear. Whether you're ready for them or not, right? They're just out there and they're mind-blowing. Well, a huge idea, whether you're ready or not, that you need to look at is the fast-growing DeFi market. Now, let me point out that some of these DeFi platforms use stable coins, and that's very important because what a stable coin is, and I'm talking about USDC, I'm talking about Tether, for example, what a stable coin is, is it's a coin with fiat currency reserves. Now, that's very important given the risk of regulatory blowback. Well, understand, when you're dealing with stable coins, they don't threaten central banks the way sound money, think Bitcoin, think Dash, think gold, does. Central banks still control the fiat currency supply. So if I'm using a stable coin that's supposed to represent one dollar. Well, understand, the central banks still have a lot of control over that one dollar. Right? They still control the printing of dollars, the money supply, the quantitative easing, or quantitative tightening. Not that we've seen that lately. Stablecoins, simply put, legitimate the existence of fiat currency. So, let me just point out, right now in the fiat world, unlike the DeFi world, where loans are over-collateralized, in other words, I'll allow you to borrow some money if you have far more than the amount of the loan on file, right? Subject to a smart contract, locked up, where if you default on the loan, I can then grab your collateral, right? That's the DeFi world in a nutshell. Wow, the crows are around. Maybe that's an omen. The fiat world is extremely different, right? The fiat world is under-collateralized at times, right? There are loans through government programs that are designed to help folks who might not qualify for loans otherwise. We use cute terms for some loans, right? Subprime markets. And of course you have governments dictating, controlling the interest rates through Fed-based bond purchases. So understand, DeFi is very different than fiat. My point to you is when you find a DeFi platform that is relying upon stable coins, in my
my opinion, that poses less of a threat to the powers that be than a platform that's relying on Dash. Right? Coins that aren't tethered to fiat currency. Coins that are operating independently of fiat currency. So in this world where, let's face it, you're hard-pressed to get a good interest rate in the fiat currency world, right? Where bonds have you feeling fortunate to get 2% over 10 years, right? That's the current fiat world, folks. Would it surprise you to know that in the DeFi world, where they're relying on smart contracts, where they can make loans without having to invest in the buildings and the employees that a traditional bank has to deal with. Right? In the DeFi world, right now you have an interesting development. The emergence of networks that pay fixed rate rate of returns, right? If you're a creditor, you appreciate that. If you're a borrower, you appreciate that. And the platforms are based on stable coins. In other words, let's say a government feels threatened that you're out there, God forbid, using Dash Right, using some coin that has a limited supply, Bitcoin, some coin that has a limited supply, right, and that isn't dependent in any way on the supply of fiat currency. So the government does programs, monetary programs, to increase the money supply, to manipulate interest rates, and you're outside of all of that because you're using Dash or Bitcoin, right? Because you know that the currency you're using has a finite supply regardless of the amount of demand, right? No, no, what I'm about to talk about isn't that kind of platform. What I'm talking about is a platform that is reliant on stable coins. So it's really reliant on fiat currency. Because if USDC is based on a dollar, in other words, the value of USDC should always equal one dollar, whether that dollar is a strong dollar or a watered down dollar. Well, if I'm the government, I'm going to think, well, you know what? They're dependent on dollars. We can play games with the dollars. And it'll impact this platform. We're not threatened because they're dependent on us. This isn't the same as Dash, where they don't care about us. They're challenging our power. Right now, for the record, I got into crypto because Bitcoin and Dash challenges the power of central banks and governments. Right? That's why I'm in Bitcoin. I know there's some of you who've been with me for years who are in crypto for that reason. Right? You're tired of seeing these politicians try to allocate capital. You're wondering why they believe they can allocate capital better than markets. You're tired of losing the purchasing power of your dollar. Right? You're tired of making advantageous deals, right? Whether borrowing or lending money, only to have the government inflate away your benefit of the bargain. I get it. Trust me. I get it clearly. But understand, here we're just investors. I'm not saying I'm a big fan of stable coins, but what I am saying 
is that right now you have a platform, it's called Notional Finance. Research it yourself. The website is notional.finance. Again, notional.finance. And if you're in the world of fiat currency, if you want to invest in a way where you're supporting fiat currency and the status quo, right, central banks, governments, if that's your thing, and if you're tired of getting 2% or less as your rate of return, right, in an environment that looks at least short term like it's going to be inflationary, then I think you should at least give a look, and I'm just telling you what I'm doing, right? Just be aware that notional finance is out there. Right now, for lenders, if you want to lend out your money and get a rate of return, they're actually promising you more than 5%, right? More than 5% annually. More than double the rate you're getting right now on the 10-year bond. Right? More than double. This is the world of DeFi. Folks, it's moving so fast that it's astonishing. Let me point out that Notional Finance has some big-time investors. Right? Coinbase Ventures is an investor. Pantera Capital is an investor. Some other groups listed on the websites are investors. So right now, I'm not an investor. Understand, I am trying to just keep track of the company. It's on my radar. When they allow public investors, when I don't have to be, a member of a capital fund to invest, when they open it up to the public, I'm certainly going to give Notional Finance a very hard look. Because I like the idea that they're in the world of USDC, stablecoin. Right? I like the idea that they're in the world of stablecoins. So it's clear what you're getting back in the transaction. Right? The transactions are denominated in dollars, right? Stable coins tethered to dollars. I like that. I also like the short maturity on the loans. Right? I'm comforted by the fact that some heavy duty investors are involved. That this is a project that has enough credibility to attract repeat players in the crypto space. And I like the fact that the government isn't going to feel as threatened by a platform that relies on stable coins that are dependent upon and are supposed to accurately reflect the value of fiat currency. Right? Make no mistake, I prefer investing in Bitcoin and Dash. Right, I prefer getting outside of the fiat currency world. But I also want to be able to make money in the fiat currency world. I believe notional finance, as it matures, right now it's nascent. Right? right now, it's very early. This is the top of the first inning. But let's just say I have my eye on them. Right, Very high rate of return. Affordable loans if you're a borrower. Right, You're paying less than 7%. Right, Affordable loans if you're a borrower. Great rate of return if you're a lender. Stable coin base, understand the smart contracts are based on the Ethereum platform. Be aware of that. Right? Ethereum, of course, has had some problems lately.
with the gas fees, etc. But I'm guessing that as these markets mature, faster chains, Polkadot, perhaps Binance Smart Chain, are going to get involved either with this project or with similar projects. Right? DeFi is here now. Understand, notional finance has already been involved in millions and millions of dollars worth of transactions. They're slowly opening up their doors to third-party investors. I think this is the kind of play that crypto investors like myself want to keep an eye on. Now, everything I've said in this video has been offered for entertainment purposes only. Please do not construe anything I've said as financial advice. What I want everyone to do is to consult with their own financial professionals and to do their own independent research. Don't rely on mine. Here, the website is notional.finance. I think it's worth a look. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.